coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Bombardier CS300 readies for its first flight. 100 volunteers have signed up for a one-way trip to Mars. And EAA's Ford Trimotor provides round trips for 800 passengers. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Bombardier Commercial Aircraft has announced that Transport Canada inspectors have issued the flight permit that allows the first CS300 flight test vehicle to join the flight test program. The CS300 aircraft's first flight is expected to occur during the period February 26 through the 28th. The aircraft is expected to perform a series of handling and system calibration tests at a wide range of altitudes and speeds. Rob Duar, Vice President of the C-Series program, said in part, quote, This is an exciting time. The first four CS-100 flight test vehicles have flown more than 1,000 hours. Test results are looking great, and the CS-300 aircraft will perform its maiden flight in the coming days, end quote. Bombardier claims the C-Series aircraft will offer a 15% cash operating cost advantage, a 20% fuel burn advantage, exceptional operational flexibility, wide body comfort, and an unmatched environmental and noise footprint. The private nonprofit organization Mars One, which plans to send human volunteers on a one-way trip to colonize Mars, has named 50 men and 50 women to proceed to the next round of the Mars One astronaut selection process. Mars One has a goal of establishing the colony on the Red Planet in 2025. The candidates were selected from a pool of 660 candidates after participating in personal online interviews. During the interviews, the candidates had a chance to show their understanding of the risk involved, team spirit, and their motivation to be a part of this life-changing expedition. It seems to us that the term life-changing seems to be a bit of an understatement when teamed with the term one-way trip. Skeptics of this adventure say it's unlikely to occur because of the cost involved and a time frame that has been established. After the break, EAA's Tin Goose sets a passenger hearing record. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Ford Motor Company produced 199 of their trimotor airliners between 1925 and 1933 that linked the early days of all wood and tube and rag airliners with the modern age of airline travel. However, the few that remain flying today continue to link us to that romantic period in the history of flight often called the golden age of aviation. Now it appears the EAA's Ford trimotor flew a record number of passengers during its tour stop last weekend at Donna Anna County Airport in Santa Teresa, New Mexico. The three and a half day tour stop co-hosted by the War Eagles Air Museum and EAA Chapter 555 of Las Cruces saw the airplane make 89 flights, providing more than 800 passengers with rides. Based on the preliminary report, the tour accommodated more passengers than ever before in a single three and a half day weekend tour stop. Each week we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off at last. Albania's only living ace and his faithful wingman and compendium, Corporal Oya Wibad Wibad, making his first, no, second, or third, maybe. He's, he's almost ready to get his license to fly, and you will see how good he bolts that plane through this beautiful California sky. 
It's hard to tell if this video is about an air show aerobatic team or a Saturday Night Live comedy routine. Whichever it is, you'll see the Royal Albanian Air Force at its best. Search RAT Video Air Show on YouTube. After these messages, Airbus Aerial Refueler shows its capabilities. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Airbus A400M airlifter, a combination transport and aerial refueler, demonstrates its air-to-air -air refueling capabilities. In four flights, it performed 74 contacts and refueled two Spanish Air Force F-18 fighters at the same time. The airline industry group Airlines for America has joined the Know Before You Fly campaign to promote awareness and safety for unmanned aircraft flights. This program provides online information and safety guidelines for small UAV operators. The Advocates for Aviation Safety Foundation is seeking organizations and individuals to serve as local host for the virtual National Aviation Safety Standout to be held nationwide on March 21st. This event combines a webinar with a local safety seminar. At the 6th Annual Flight School Operators Conference presented by the Flight School Association of America, Peggy Chabrian, the president and founder of Women in Aviation, was honored by being presented the organization's Moyer Leadership Award. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. It's common to associate NASA with rockets and spaceflight, but they also have a balloon program office that's just wrapped up its 2014-2015 Antarctic campaign while prepping for an around-the-world flight launching out of Wanaka, New Zealand in March. After more than 16 days of flight, operators conducted a planned flight termination of a scientific mission called SPIDER in January, which was the final mission of the campaign. Other flights in the 2014-2015 Antarctic campaign included a mission called Anita 3, which flew more than 22 days, and the COSY mission that was cut short after 43 hours into the mission because of a small gas leak in the balloon. These missions carried payloads that ranged from 2,900 pounds to more than 6,000 pounds. Debbie Fairbrother, NASA's Balloon Program Office Chief, said, quote, Stable, long-duration flights at near-space altitudes above more than 99% of the atmosphere are highly desirable in the science community and we're ready to deliver, end quote. Well, that's our program for Monday, February 23rd. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.